Welcome. NOAA has just released its April of 2024 Global Climate Report, and this video is a summary of that report. It shows that April was the hottest April on record, and let's take a look at the data to see how we get there. Let's take a quick summary of the results. As I said, it was the hottest April on record, that's over the last 175 years. Both land and ocean set new highs. Both hemispheres set new highs. The upper atmosphere was the hottest of any month so far recorded, that's in the last 45 years. The northern hemisphere snow and ice cover was the lowest on record. Global sea ice was the 10th smallest. El Nino is transitioning to ENSO neutral conditions. And atmospheric carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide levels reach new highs. Let's take a look at how the temperatures were distributed around the globe. South America had its hottest April. North America its second. Europe its second. Asia its third. Africa its fourth. And Australasia its ninth hottest. The Arctic was the sixth hottest. All oceans in both hemispheres had its hottest April on record. And as the oceans dominate the planet, that's going to dominate the results of the global temperature measurements. Here's a plot of the global temperatures for the month of April over the last 174 years. You can see the most recent measurement, the one on the far right, has beaten all previous measurements by quite a large margin, by about 0.1 degrees centigrade. But this is a very large change. So this is a very worrying trend. This is a more detailed map showing the temperature ranges. This is what's called a percentiles map. So deep red indicates record highs, deep blue indicates record lows. Now you'll notice that there is only one pixel here that is a record low, that's in Antarctica. But most of the rest of the globe is either record high, deep red, or much above average. There are very few areas of the globe that are actually below average. And interestingly, El Nino is still showing signs of being there in April, though it does seem to be weakening somewhat. We can summarize global temperature trends by looking at the rankings. Globally, it was the hottest April on record, as I said. The land was the hottest by about 2 degrees centigrade. The ocean was the hottest by, for above average that is, by about 1 degree centigrade. The northern hemisphere had the hottest April, land by plus 2.5 degrees centigrade, oceans by 1.2 degrees centigrade, and even the southern hemisphere had the second hottest April on record, land 20th hottest, and ocean was the hottest, 0.9 degrees centigrade above average. Well, let's see how 2024 is shaping up year to date compared with previous years. 2024 is shown by the black line here on the top of the curve. And you see in the first three months of the year, it's outperformed all previous record years. These are the top 10 record years um, so far. And you'll notice if you look on the right, those are the last 10 years. So we're already ahead of the temperature curve for 2024 and outpacing most every other thing by quite a large margin. The 2023, which is the warmest year, is the slightly thinner black line. And so far, we're well above that by about 0.4 degrees centigrade. So it's going to take quite some effort on behalf of the La Nina that's coming to cool things down enough to compensate for this, this difference. So 2024 is likely to be the hottest year on record, or at least be very much up there with the rest of them. So we're likely to have 11 of the hottest years on record over the last 11 years. That should be a warning to at least some people. Now, the upper atmosphere has generally been the exception to the rule. It's been slightly cooler than the rest of the planet, or at least it's been claimed to be although the indications are pretty similar to the surface. You can see that the most recent point, April, is a record high of all months over this period of time. And the smoothed average, which is this red curve, which is the one that they generally use, is again above all previous averaged measurements. 
Well, let's take a look at the snow and ice cover in the northern hemisphere, which is something we haven't done before. And it's the lowest on record over a 57 year period. The general trend is losing about 1.3 or 1.4 percent of the northern hemisphere snow cover every year. And it's been going down quite significantly over the last nearly 60 years. Well, what about global sea ice extent? This is a plot of that. And this is the 10th lowest global sea ice extent on record. That's a, a 46 year record. And again, you can see that it's dropping at quite a, a similar pace to the uh, surface snow and ice cover. It's about minus 1.6 to 1.7% per year. Welcome. We could break this down by hemisphere. We'll take a look at the northern hemisphere first. That's the Arctic sea ice extent. And this was the 16th lowest on record. And you can see that again, the trend is quite significant and it's losing northern hemisphere sea ice at a rate of about 2.44% per year. We could complete the picture by looking at the southern sea ice extent. Here it was the 10th lowest on record and the overall trend is about basically flat. Uh, it was increasing for a number of years and now it's turned around and it's well below average. As I mentioned, El Nino is weakening. You can see here there's some uh, cold sea to the west of South America, which hasn't been there before. There's still quite a lot of warm ocean there. So there's still some effect of the El Nino in place probably by next month we'll have enso neutral conditions and certainly by june if that's the case then we should be expecting la nina conditions to start something in like july or august of this year and that would create a cooling effect in the pacific ocean which will moderate global temperatures significantly or at least should do the situation with the greenhouse gases is quite disappointing. Last month we had an increase of four parts per million in carbon dioxide and this month we have a three parts per million increase in carbon dioxide over the previous year. Now that is much above the average. It's been about two parts per million for many years now. So there seems to be some acceleration of this carbon dioxide and I'm not sure what the origin of it is. We can see how the other greenhouse gases are faring, but they are also at record levels. Methane is at record level, having increased by about nine parts per billion over the previous year. And nitrous oxide has increased by about one part per billion over the previous year. So all of these are on increases and all of them are setting new records every month. Let's take a quick look at total solar irradiance. That is the amount of energy that arrives at the top of our atmosphere. So is the, basically the energy input to the Earth. Solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 significantly and is remaining relatively high. Now you'll notice some low uh, numbers recently where the total solar radiance seems to drop right way, way down. That's because of sunspots, large sunspots like we've had over the last couple of months don't allow so much energy out from the sun because they're dark and cooler. So when you see a dip like that, that is a large sunspot. The overall effect, though, is because those sunspots dissipate by breaking up into faculty, that those faculty eventually increase the overall total solar radiance. So that's why you get a maximum in the total solar radiance at solar maximum rather than at solar minimum when there are no sunspots. Let's take a quick look at the continental United States. On the left we have a picture of the temperature rankings. Again it's a percentiles map. Deep red would indicate record highs, deep blue would indicate record lows and you can see there are no record highs or lows but the vast majority of the United States was above normal or much above normal in terms of temperature. If you look on the right, we have the precipitation index. It looks like the western half of the country is 
edging towards drought again. The central part got more than its fair share of rain. It's a couple of places here that actually had record rainfall with that deep blue color. And, but there are some drought areas along the eastern seaboard and in Florida. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Well, one is that El Nino is weakening and will eventually turn into in some neutral conditions probably next month or two and then into La Nina conditions for the latter half of the year. Global temperatures are continuing to rise as are global greenhouse gases. Likely that 2024 will be as hot if not hotter than 2023. We've had nine of the hottest years in a row and 2024 is likely to make it 10. And so far we've had 11 record setting months in a row which is unprecedented. If next month is also a record setting month then we'll have had a full year of records and that will actually mean that we've probably had the hottest decade and certainly in the last 175 years but remember our records st start in 1850 that was the end of the little ice age which go back another 500 years so we could well go back to the 1300s before we could find a likely um, decade that would uh, rival this one and so far the measurements indicate that this decade is going to be is much hotter than anything back in the a medieval warm period or the Roman warm period or even possibly the Holocene maximum which was back 7,000 years ago and if you get past that barrier then we go all the way back to the previous interglacial which is over 105,000 years ago so this is quite something that's happening now something quite unprecedented so that's it folks thank you for watching until next time, stay safe and goodbye.